Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Today we are doing another Top 5 Friday. Once again, I'm not bringing back Top 5 Friday, not right now anyways, but I am doing it for the month of October for 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, these books are in no discernible order. These are just another, since it's Indie Week, Indie slash Small Press Week, I figured I'd do another top five Indie Small Press books. I've done this multiple times in the past. If I can find the videos, I'll leave them down there in the doobly-doo. But anyways, first off, we have Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. Uh, this is the second book that I had read from uh, Laurel. Uh, and I need to be uh, upfront. I know probably everybody on this list, and I'm at least friends or acquaintances with each and every one of them. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're worried about bias, I mean, just check out my other reviews. I'm harder on my friends than I am on strangers. So anyways, about this book, um, it is the story of a mother's grief. Um, she lost her adult son. Um, the best part of the book, uh, you know, I look for character pacing and dread. Um, when I, when, no matter what I read, even if it's you know romance, even though I rarely read it, I look for those three things. Um, I, the characters need to be good. The pacing needs to be interesting. The the book needs to be interesting. Keep me reading. And the dread, even in something like romance or whatever it is, it's just the conflict. Like I don't want it either. I want something bad to happen to somebody, or I don't want something bad to happen to somebody. So dread plays into every genre. The character pacing and dread in here is absolutely phenomenal, but what I will note specifically, and I brought this up in my original review, my written review, everything for this one is, I am super impressed with how we never meet this son character, yet Laurel managed to, to give all the character development we needed through how the mother looks at the world by by comparisons like oh my son used to do that my son used to say that my son used to do this and that and the other i thought that was brilliant and it's it's a favorite of mine all right next up we have one um that i don't really think it's an autumnal read like for halloween season but i also think it would be a hell of a lot of fun like sitting back and watching um you know like monster flicks with your friends and that is the rue by Alan Baxter. Alan Baxter is an absolutely amazing person and a, amazing writer. And I really, this is the first one I read from him since then. I've read The Gulp um, and Manifest. I can't remember the name right now off the top of my head. But this so far, and he'll probably cringe hearing it, but uh, this one is my favorite one so far um, just because it is just just fun from beginning to end if you are a member of the horror community on twitter even some on youtube you're going to recognize a few names in this because he used a bunch of uh, his acquaintances and friends and followers as the victims for the rue and yes it is about a demonic kangaroo he's australian he did a fantastic job just try it i mean it's it's super short um, if you're looking to go, I don't know, it's 127 pages, and like five of those pages are the glossary with all the Aussie, Aussie slang. So anyways, definitely check it, uh, pick it up, check it out. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Next up, we have a darker, much, much darker uh, addition to this list, and that is Waif by Samantha Kolsnick. Um, I first read True Crime from Samantha, and I was chomping at the bit to get anything else that she published. And this one here is probably the most uh, Cronenberg book I have ever read. And David Cronenberg writes his own books also. But this one is even more Cronenberg than his own book. Um, it is about a woman who is trying to find herself, trying to... Uh, you know, going through trying to figure out her sexuality trying to figure out a, a, a bad relationship and it has some of the coolest gnarliest body horror um i have come across um the uh the boyfriend who wants to change um so that she will you know love him or want to want him around that one of the cooler uh storylines i've come across but uh definitely if you like david cronenberg definitely check this one out all right, next up we have uh, this one I have to give even more of a uh, disclaimer. I am not only friends, good friends with this person, talk to her every single day, but um, I also am a business partner, and we have re my, my publishing company that I co-own with Darren Kapoff and T.C. Parker, the author I'm going to be talking about next, 
Um, we have since uh, removed it from her personal account and published it under the Hold My Beer Publishing. So I have a vested interest in this book, but it's fantastic. Just go read other people's reviews if you don't trust mine because I have a vested interest. I understand. But this is the book. This is the reason why I contacted her to begin with um, to ask her to come write Maiden with me. So we wrote a book together about, uh, about a horror story about a boat out in the Bering Strait that is overcome by mermaids and some really gnarly crew members. But anyways, we're talking about Salt Blood. Uh, this one is absolutely... It's, 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 Fantastic. I've never read anything like it. Um, it's about a prison compound or pe from uh, and the prisoners probably shouldn't ha shouldn't be there. Um, it's more more along the lines of crimes against the state or you know th that kind of thing. Um, uh, anarchists that 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 kind of just you know there's not terrible people on this prison island. Um, and the mesh or whatever it is that's over the island, fantastic bit of, uh, of creativity there. But my selling point here is the creature, the lore, everything behind it. This book is only 300, yeah, 300 pages. And I got so much lore. She introduced me to a brand new uh, monster that I'd never heard of before. And it was a lot of fun from beginning to end. Highly, highly recommended. Uh, recommend this. And I reviewed this uh, ages ago before I even contacted her to come and work with me. Also, she's my editor. She's a bunch, a bunch of different things. But yeah, Salt Blood, T.C. Parker. Check it out. It's a different cover now. Um, I actually created the... Uh, no, wait a second. Did I do a new cover? I don't think I did a new cover for this one. But anyways, uh, Keelan Patrick Burke did this one, and it's fantastic. I don't think we had to change that one. Okay, next up, last one on the list. If you have not read this author, you're doing yourself a grave disservice. I reviewed one of her books yesterday, and I keep saying this, but this channel is turning in to a Haley Piper fanboy account. This is Queen of Teeth by Haley Piper. If you are discounting this book because you've seen the movie Teeth and you or you don't like an idea of a vagina dentata or that's 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 teeth in your new new cavity. Anyways, but, <laughs> but if if that kind of story turns you off, give this a try anyways because it's not only about that. It's a uh, sci-fi uh, uh, what is a dystopian future world um, where genetics have kind of gone crazy. Uh, certain people are born with certain code. Uh, it's so many cool things go on here, but the climax of this book is absolutely batshit amazing. Um, it, we're talking about big set pieces, big action. We're talking tanks, giant monsters, all that stuff. And you can't really tell by the cover or by the description that it's gonna turn into that. Um, but I promise you. If, if you if you don't like this, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know what to tell you. I, I, I would not know what to recommend you if you said that you did not like this book. And I'm not going to say anything stupid like, you know, if you don't like this, you're crazy. None of that stuff. But if I, I would be hard pressed to recommend you anything else. If you were to ask me, who's a new horror author I should try? And I point out Haley Piper. If you don't like Haley Piper, you're probably not going to like anything else that I recommend. But anyways. Those are my five choices this time for my top five indie small press books. Have you read any of these books? If you have, let me know down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!